that is a very unique, rather eccentric and beautiful sound, which is a very good transition to today's next guest, Miss or Mrs. Miss Lorna. Lorna Heath. Thank you, hello. Thank you for being on the show Thank today. you, thank you. Okay. So our viewers are probably wondering, as myself, what this is called and what's it used Crystal for? singing bowl. Crystal singing bowl? A crystal bowl, yes. It gives out sounds and vibrations for relaxation and healing sometimes, but normally relaxation. Yeah, I certainly felt that then. Um, I felt rather transported. Thank you very much, thank you. This is a lovely sound, isn't it? And on that note, as there are many different sounds out there, which are your three favourites? I can think of bird song straight away. Definitely bird song. And then of course I love the sound of thunder. And I also love the sound of the tides coming in mm. and washing out. Definitely. Washing what washing out or washing up? <laughs> that as well. Yeah. <laughs> clusser, clusser. Mm. <laughs> uh, so, uh, is, is one of those the gift of sound or is the gift of sound something else? No, the gift of sound is a, is a group of uh, singing bowls of uh, Tibetan origin, uh, metal bowls and crystal bowls. And uh, there are sound events going on where they can have a nice um, sound bowl experience relaxation i'm not doing it at the moment i'm having a break at the moment okay but i'm um, definitely going to get back to it again i've been doing it for quite a few years now sounds good sounds good um uh, is that is that the only bowl that you've got i've got three crystals and i've got a whole regiment of brass ones which are actually packed away at the moment because mm. I, I did a talk a few weeks ago and i thought got them back out the bowl and i can hear them in the cases going lips out <laughs> Um, I, I assume they're rather expensive, or did you, or were they donated to you at all? Or? Uh, a couple have been gifts. I bought one from Tibet, uh, from a friend, sorry, Nepal, not Tibet. They come from Tibet, that's why I said mm. that. And, uh, but m most of these I bought with the proceeds of um, the charges that I um, ask for. Um, it's, it's a privately run sort of organisation where I, there's no profit in, in my pocket ever. I go straight into, back into the, mm. any money ploughs back in so I can buy new bowls and new little instruments. Mm. That's, that's wonderful. Mm. Um, would you say there's anything different about your sessions compared to those of others and if so, what are they? Um, I like a certain amount of people in. I don't like to overcrowd the rooms too much. Mm. Um, that's, and people have been, made a mistake of doing that in the past. I've been to them where you just elbow to elbow with people. That's not a very really good idea. And I like the layout of the people different to what I normally have. Normally well, I've been to sound experiences before where they just come in, throw their mat down, get their blanket under them and over them. Mm. And, and it's all, all willy nilly. Whereas I like to be in proper regimented lines so that you, they can grab the sound better that way I think. Oh great and on, on that note um, what's the most amount of uh, people that you endeavour to get to your sessions is it 10 or is it 5 yeah. is it 15? It's 10, 10 is, is my best I don't like to go above 10 really so I've got right. 5 each side of the hall or whatever room I'm mm. in yeah. Okay thank you uh, and on that note, how and when did the gift of sound begin? That started about 10 years ago in the village of Milford. I thought I'd try okay. it out and uh, met a load of interesting people who I still see today these days. Mm. Yeah, some very faithful ones have always stayed in the area. And, uh, and I hired a little room in the village and um, there was no room to put anything down. No one could lie down because I had 55 people turn up in a small room. <laughs> <laughs> if, I'd have, if I'd have hired a bigger room, they could have all laid down, but it still went down extremely well, and that was ten years ago. And when, where did that uh, idea originally come from then? 
I've always liked the bold sound of the bowls, and mm. then I'm uh, getting to know people um, at different venues. I could see there were some events going on, and I liked the sound very much, and I thought I'd give it a go, and here I am. Do you still have the your your first bowl that you yes. bought? Yes, one I bought about 20 years ago, a, little, a small one, it came with a book, mm. and I used to use that for space clearing in people's homes. People used to want space clearing done, and this particular bowl that I bought, which was very small, was what it was made for, mm. uh, space clearing in houses and homes. Okay, um, I know this sounds like a very random question, but uh, what, do you, what is your opinion on on um, healing with a uh, with, with Reiki, for example, compared to healing with sound. Healing with sound, you can see and you can hear it, mm. and that's that's why I prefer to go down that avenue rather than Reiki. I know nothing about Reiki, okay. and I don't profess to know anything, because uh, this is to me this is real, and you can see it and you can feel the vibration, you can feel the outcome of it straight oh, away. That's yeah. why I like it's visual. It's a visual thing when they're all laying down on the floor mm. and you've got the bowls out, you can actually see and hear this experience. Nothing's hidden. I agree, actually. I've, I've, I've actually been to a few of uh, Lorna's um, uh, sound, sound events, sound, sound events in, <laughs> in the past. And uh, yeah, they're very powerful, very powerful. Um, so if you, if you wanted to, would you train somebody to be a sound healer and if so would you mind sharing that process with us uh, if I was going to I wouldn't profess that I'm any um, uh, mind through experience that I've learned all this mm. um, from, from different people I've learned things from and I wouldn't profess to be a teacher to give them qualifications of anything but I would certainly share um, if anyone said to me which I have a lot of in the past can you show me how to play a brass singing bowl I have shown them but mm. some people haven't got the ability, no matter how hard they try. I think a lot of it comes innate with you. You can either do it or you can't. Yeah. I know a lot of people that actually cannot, over the years, even get one sound out of a bowl. It's just one of those things, like, I can't play the piano. I'd love to play it, but I cannot learn the piano. I just can't do it. All so right. we're all different. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Is there anything else that you are involved with, apart from the gift of sound? I'm a chairperson of the Dorset of Mysteries group. I've been mm -hmm. for about 13, 14 years now, but I've known the group longer than that. They're a very successful Dorset outlet. There's three of us um, run the place. Uh, a dear deceased friend uh, was with us as well, which was four of us. Now he's not with us anymore. Mm. So, but the three of us are coping really well, and we have wonderful speakers every, every month of the year, except May when there's voting going on, when we can't get hold of the hall. And we have different speakers of all subjects that are either esoteric or even um, things outside of our group. Don't necessarily have to be a, a mystery. But uh, we do have some ex excellent speakers every year. We have one every month. Watch the space of the Dorset Earth Mysteries group on the net. That's very intriguing. So like, do, do you get... Um... Because I, I recently I recently met a, a, a flat earther and an anti vaxxer and um, I'm, I'm wondering if you could find those kind of people going to going to Dorset Earth Mysteries group. Or, no, or, the the group we are we are <coughs> unlike a lot of groups where you have the majority of women. <coughs> this is a totally different. This is more male orientated, left brain stuff. This is more scientific things as well. We do have the soft esoteric stuff. Uh, we have got a few of those this year coming and have already been and uh, but um the, the main thing is um a good solid talk and we've also got a lot of male members mm. we have a proper membership every year then it costs less to come in during the year which is a good investment okay. and um we have a lot of men who ask questions which is very very good for the group yeah oh that's good then that's good um, so going back to the gift of sound, how do you, or how did you go about finding participants for your sessions? You, I, I know that you mentioned a bit about that already. Yeah, well, basically, just wherever the venue is, just slap a poster on the door. That'll help. 
Mm. Um, and then my emails to people who are on my mailing list. Okay. And it'll also go on my Facebook page, the Gift of Sound um, uh, page, which tells you the next date of our next uh, event going on. So there's quite a few outlets. I put them in shop doorways as well, um, who are happy to have a poster up on their wall. So that just goes to show that um, <coughs> offline promotion still works. It certainly does. Yeah. The, so I always do the posters myself and uh, and then just go around. Um, but now I do it through email, which is because it's, it's almost becoming a closed group. There are enough people without putting the posters out now. Mm. Because that is word, and a lot of it is word of mouth, yeah. which has been very successful lately. That makes my skin crawl in a very good way. Um, so next question, what would you say are the main purposes of your sessions? Community, getting people together, because after it's been, uh, when, when it's over with, we always have tea. Mm. And it gets people together talking, and it's strangers talking, and they make friends. Yeah. That's one of the things I love most. When I see, when I've finished a sound experience, everyone gets up chatting to each other, and I look back, and it's very rewarding to see these people all having a good time chatting with each other sharing information in their own business cards it's a lovely way of networking yeah i'll never forget the um after meeting one of your friends at one of the sessions and she came to to uh the hospital where i had the where I had, uh, yes patient. yes yeah. she yeah. did didn't Bless she her. yes yes well she's mm. still around and she still yeah. misses me yeah it's lovely mm. lovely lovely lady yeah so I have you to thank for that. Yeah, lovely, thank you. As well as most, uh, a lot of other things. Um, what, are your, what are your future goals as a sound sharer? Well, when I get my... I've got some problems with my knees at the moment. Mm. So once they're all sorted, I can actually get myself out again with help from friends mm -hmm. um, to get my uh, things packed up in the car because it's a very heavy... two heavy cases of bowls and it's, it's um, a lot of energy... But once that's sorted, um, I'll be back on the road again. Definitely be back doing the, you know, sound events in the Milford and the surrounding areas. Well, on that note, have you thought about doing uh, any of your sound sharing sessions at home in your lounge? Yeah, I've like done that? it in the past often. Okay. Um, but one day we were a little bit crowded, and I felt a bit guilty at two of the ladies that had to go in the hall. They still heard the music and the mm. sound. It was a drumming session as well that we had then. Right. I used to have a drumming session every other Wednesday and a sound bath every other Sunday in those days, in the early, some of the early days. And um, it made it a lot simpler. People just come into my house. It was lovely. And then again, the community feeling in the kitchen with a cup of tea. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've certainly got a place that's big enough, you know. Yeah. Okay, and um, to those of us who would like to be able to heal ourselves, especially physically, what advice could you perhaps give us and the viewers? Well, buy yourself a little Tibetan bowl. And just, even if you can't go round with the mallet, just tap it and just hold it under your, under your face and just mm. tap it. And okay. that, it just, it just works. Or if you've got a pain in your thigh, say, sometimes people put the on their thigh or on their back and let the vibrations go through. Because as we know, by, you know, even scientifically now, people mm. are seeing that the vibrational healing is mm. actually working. So how, how, on that, how, how, on that note, how do you know whether a, a bowl is going to be genuine or not? Especially with um, online... Uh, stores such as Amazon and eBay. I know what you're saying. Mm. Well, I've never bought a brass bowl without trying it out. Um, I play them. Uh, when I went to Nepal a couple of years ago, I went to this, a friend took me into a shop that sells all these hundreds of bowls on shelves. It was a sight for sore eyes. It was wonderful. And I sat out the back. I had my other bowls on my phone recorded. Mm -hmm. So I played the, bo the bowls from my phone. And then I tapped, when I picked up a, uh, a bowl from the shelf, I sat at the back for about an hour. Everyone was waiting outside for me. They were quite happy chatting. And I, and I found the bowl. That, that's how I found my bowls that way. If I bought them in a the shop, they let me pick them up and they let me play them. Oh, okay. So but with a, I did have uh, my crystal bowls from Amazon. But oh. they were highly oh. successful because I played 
I went on YouTube to get the right notes I wanted, mm. basically D and E, and uh, an, an A one I wanted. So I just pressed it on YouTube, played my bowl, played their bowl, and I said, and I, yes, that's the one I want. Ordered it, and I made the right choice, which is why this sounds so successful. I, so that's how I did it. You got that from Amazon? Yes. <laughs> no way. Wow. Through, through the post, well, it wasn't through Amazon, it was through a company who sold them mm. in, in India, yeah. Quite yeah. India, wow, that's, that's Quite amazing, amazing, really, that it actually worked out all right, that they actually, and also, when they arrived, they were true. When I sat it with my other one, mm. and I played it with the other one, it was the perfect choice, and it also goes with my Shruti's as well, my Shruti yarn. Shruti, uh... They are the what, in, Indian the accordion when you squeeze, it's a squeeze box, it's a box. Oh, and you okay. play it like that. When you're in India, you've got a key, you've got a piano keyboard on the mm. shruti as well mm. as, as pulling this. But mine is just makes a sound on the, on the on two or three different notes. Okay. I've got two of those. So Very viewers, sad. if you'd like to know more about, about uh, the shruti, you can get in touch with us and we can put you on in touch with Lorna and on that note I'm pretty sure that our viewers would like to know more about you especially online and uh, obviously the gift of sound as well so where where online could they find out about you well sometimes I've got a few sessions on um, YouTube at the moment but I'm waiting for more when my um, music partner if you want like to call him comes around and helps me put things out for me um, but it's just basically the Facebook, the Gift of Sound Facebook um, page is, is where um, you'll find some of the songs and the music that we've done. And as I say, it will show dates when I'm doing sound bars as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Lorna, for coming on the show today. Thank you very much for yeah. asking me here. It's been lovely. Thank you. And um, before we go, uh, you've, I, I assume you've known about of fish promotions and out of fashion TV for a while. I'd just like to know if you have any feedback that you'd like to give us. Yeah, about six years ago, um, Puffer Fish um, uh, allowed me to have some CDs made of me singing songs. And it was four. Two were my own songs and two were basically uh, someone else's. So, um, and yeah, so Puffer Fish is um, good at promoting your stuff if you approach Thank you very much. And that's uh, another episode over with. And don't forget that if you'd like to know more about uh, Lorna and the Gift of Sound, and if you have Facebook, go to... Facebook page, the Gift of Sound Facebook Yeah, the page. Gift of Sound, yes. And there's a YouTube channel as well. If you, if you go onto the onto that you can either ask just go straight to youtube and get lorna heath a gift of sound and a couple of things will come up will pop. just lorna heath gift of sound and it will come up through google nice and just to round off the video can we get another one of those beautiful sounds one of these little sounds yeah let's change the 